Welcome to Mott City TV, the best of modern living in Dallas. This episode, we'll tour a home. That's a symphony for the eyes. Then we meet Cat Cole and see her architecturally inspired jewelry. And we visit Werner Field Architects, dedicated to the art of building. I'm your host, Jeff Levine, and this is Mott City TV, Dallas Edition. There's a saying that three heads are better than one. For today's house, that would mean three groundbreaking architects, Charles Dilbeck, George Wu, and Frank Welsh. Carolyn Summers of Briggs Freeman Sotheby's International Realty will give us a tour of the home. Built in 1936, this home was later given a very appropriate name, the Symphony House. So Carolyn, the name you've given this house is the Symphony. Yes, the Symphony House is what we call it. It's a symphony of architects that have collaborated or actually worked one after another on it. And um, it's a symphony of styles. It started out with a colonial, then George Wu did a sort of an 80s modern feel and um, Frank Welch has put his touch on it to warm it up a bit. You encapsulated everything. It truly is a symphony of work and style, but this fireplace over here, the detail. As you can see, one of the only remaining Dilbeck items is the cauldron style in the fireplace there. So you can kind of see uh, that the architects paid homage to him by keeping that, and then yet Wu put this really cool fireplace together, uh, and I don't think there's really anything like it. It's just amazing to think that as we transition from George Wu, walking into this room. It's this Frank Welch. It is Frank Welch. <laughs> and, and it's so significant because this is signature Frank Welch. This is. In fact, the matchstick ceilings here are really his signature. And it's this rift cut oak. It's beautifully done. This has a great feel, this area. Right, and this is a place where this house was very modern, as you could see as we walked in, and then all of a sudden we have just warmth and coziness that's kind of, you can picture more of a family uh, environment in this little uh, den off the kitchen. In addition to all that, this kitchen is spectacular. It really is. So we have got a beautiful waterfall countertop here and top of the line appliances, and they tried to do you know, things a little different. They didn't do the white marble countertop that everyone's doing, so we've got stainless steel and a very modern look, and it's, it's very crisp. Why don't we take a look and, and, and just get a feel for what's outside this beautiful kitchen? Yes, so right this way, we're gonna go to the uh, family room, and this elevator here was actually an addition by Frank Welch, and you can see the custom Ipe wood, which is a Brazilian teak, and. It's in a matchstick style, and it has a, a nice window in it, so it's not so claustrophobic. We have a, a beautiful family room here that opens up to the pool, the bocce court here. It's a lot of fun. That second part of the room was designed as, to be a game room for the kids. So just a whole lot of fun packed in this little area here. Yeah, and that pool's spectacular. This is a brand new pool made for a lot of fun where one can do water volleyball and it was very carefully designed by the owners and uh, the, bar the bocce court was also uh, added as well. One of the beautiful things about th this living area, it's so significant, not because of the structure, but the actual details of the design. Beautiful lines here and um, also purposeful. So let's take a peek upstairs and see how this magnificent staircase takes us to this beautiful designed landing. Yes, this is a brand new staircase actually, and it leads up here to this uh, beautiful library. It's such an inviting area, this with these soft curves of this uh, railing. Oh yeah, such a serene place to really be, and this is designed to be a reading area and a library, but also overlooking the pool, and um, you know, you can just take in the nature. It, you know, this whole house and, and these windows, it's like, this is beauty. This is beauty and light, and we have just even more bookshelves here. It's a beautiful upstairs. This is the master suite, and the master suite has this unique cabinet that's beautifully curved and rift cut oak. It has a television that lifts up and goes down and something else very special down here. If you head this way, I'll show you through this hidden door, the studio. Uh, this wow. is where George Wu designed the Symphony Center. 
Wow, what a great, this could potentially be one of the best parts of the house. It's amazing, and it's really cool to think that he designed the Symphony Center here, and um, you know, behind this hidden door, it's just got such a, an interesting legacy, right? So we have curves, we have you know, beautiful lines, and the roof cut oak again. And the, and the beauty of these elements of you know, coming through, mirroring some of what we saw in the living and the dining area, and this great staircase to heaven. <laughs> yes, well that leads up to a playroom and another additional bedroom and um, an additional office as well. Well, it's a spectacular home. Architecturally significant for Dallas, a Dilbeck, a Wu, a Welsh, it could be somebody's dream. Thank you for coming to the Symphony House. To find out more about the Symphony Home, located at 3636 University Boulevard, contact Carolyn Summers of Briggs Freeman Sotheby's International Realty, and you can visit her at briggsfreeman.com. Want more Mod City TV Dallas edition? Go to moderndallas.net for real estate, videos, gallery openings, events, and more. I am Kat Cole. I am an artist uh, working in contemporary jewelry and sculpture. I have a BFA in uh, craft and material studies with a focus in glass blowing and metal smithing. Metal smithing is a lot of problem solving. There's um, how to fit a clasp, how does it sit on the body, is it too heavy, um, where does it lay. There's a lot of things about uh, working in the jewelry scale and the small scale that is about problem solving and figuring things out and I think that's probably what drew me to metal smithing um, in the beginning is I took my first class and there were just all of these different skills and techniques that I could spend a lifetime studying and learning and perfecting and playing around with really and being playful in my studio every day is a huge part of my job. How lucky am I? <laughs> the huge component of being a studio artist is creating work that um, is both unique and resonates with um, an audience that is willing to, and especially in terms of jewelry, put it on their body and walk away and become a part of that creative conversation that you started and that they kind of complete by wearing the piece out in the world. I kind of came up with a formula, I guess, for how I look for inspiration. And so every time I've moved, I look around me, I look at the city, I look at the architecture, uh, and I, start to make work about it. When I moved to Dallas, my work, oddly enough, or maybe humorously enough, got bigger. And it became a thinking a lot more about the modern architecture that is here in Dallas. Dallas's aesthetic is clean lines. There's a lot of new buildings. There's a lot of um, architectural structures that are very boxy and, and modern and crisp. And I've also taken in a lot of the high-end urbanism of Dallas into the work in, in different ways um, with uh, really sort of bright colors and some really juicy, slick surfaces of the enamel on the steel. I started doing a specific technique that I'm, I've become pretty well known for uh, when I was in graduate school, which is called enameling. Enameling is glass fused to a metal surface. You fabricate the steel, whether it's a sign or a cup or whatever, and then from there the, the piece is coated in what's very similar to a ceramic glaze and then it's fired at 1500 degrees, melting that glass onto the surface of the metal, and the steel is sealed in this glass casing, making it rust-proof, it is less likely to chip, it's not going to fade, it literally has been encased in glass. And so from there, you can build up a surface of rich colors and textures and a lot of really exciting things on the surface of this metal piece. In 2016, I was given a grant through the city of Dallas to pursue a large-scale piece uh, in enamel and steel. Project Crossroads was inspired by the neighborhood which I have an additional studio space in. Uh, the Cedars is a really unique part of Dallas. It's one of the older neighborhoods. 
I was really inspired by the diversity of things going on in the neighborhood. And so I laid out a five panel piece that I uh, fabricated at my studio in South Dallas and shipped it to a factory in Santa Rosa, California, where I could do large scale enameling. So each piece is about um, three to five, three to four feet. Um, in size and the kiln that I was using is seven feet long, four feet wide and eight feet high. So it, a giant walk-in kiln. And I was able to um, create these panels and then they were shipped back to Dallas and installed in the Cedars for uh, six months. Dilbeck number one uh, is installed on Henderson Avenue in my own neighborhood. Uh, for the next two years as part of the Art on Henderson project. And I, it was inspired by the house across the street from me, actually. It is a uh, Charles Dilbeck, one of his early moderns, and I look out on it every day as I'm working in my studio, doing my enameling um, and doing my metal smithing. And so I really wanted to do a piece that challenged myself um, because I've never done a large scale outdoor freestanding piece of that size. I really had been thinking about this house in particular and the um, sort of iconic architectural style of this Dilbeck and using it in a sculpture. Uh, and it sort of worked out just perfectly that this piece is installed on Henderson and will be living in my neighborhood, sort of right there alongside of me for the next two years. Want to see more from Kat? You can find her work at the National Sculpture Center in downtown Dallas or on her website at cat-cole.com. New technology is revolutionizing modern lighting. Lights Fantastic Pro is giving builders, designers and architects the technology and tools they need to create exciting spaces that have the power to make life better. Join us as we talk with forward-thinking industry leaders to see how they are taking modern living to the next level. Let's dig deep and find out how they are rethinking modern living. Dichotomy in architecture um, is your part artist and part builder. I think we're trying to create something that's still tied to the site, that speaks to its context and its surroundings. And I think we achieve that through you know, careful planning, getting a feeling for the site, the materials we use. I mean, we started the firm in, in 2006 and we had you know, one year of where it looked like everything was great and then sort of the recession hit. As, as part of that whole process, starting out a business and not really having a lot of you know background material to show people I mean pushing your ideas and, and kind of fighting for what you believe in in terms of architecture I think Paul and I have known what we what we've liked for a, a long time but actually conveying that to people was sort of a struggle initially whenever you're approaching something you do approach it initially from kind of this holistic standpoint of what you're what you're trying to create in terms of a vision but at the end of the day you're trying to also meld that with your client's needs. It was our first project, our first opportunity to basically design our opinion of what is modern living. I think one criticism of uh, modern architecture is that it's very cold, so our client was drawn to very minimal type architecture. I think our goal was to provide them with that type of design and environment, but also bring some uh, warmth to the project some native materials that's important to us. So introducing some wood, uh, some natural stone, but done in a very minimal and detailed way, I think really balanced out the project to be a very warm yet modern minimalist uh, design. A wonderful client that was uh, had done a number of architecturally significant homes prior. They were very open to new ideas and pushing the envelope, uh, so to speak. It was a great success. The CCR1 was a uh, residential design build project. And the client, when they initially approached us, it was like the, the most minimal program that, that I think we've ever been approached with by a client. It was basically, they said, 
they wanted four bedrooms and a porch. It was, you know, it was very important that that project in particular was a design build project, just in, in terms of being able to assemble a team to, to go down and, uh, you know, execute a, you know, a high level of, of detailed project, you know, just right down to the, the treatment of the skin of that steel. I mean, we wound up walnut shell blasting of the, of the steel, which gives it a slightly different patina than the rest of the steel on the project. And that's something we probably, a solution we probably wouldn't have arrived at had we, you know, just been visiting the project, you know, once every couple of weeks to check it, check up on a builder. So a lot of the details evolved as we were mm. building that project from the board form concrete to uh, the skin of the uh, Corton Tower, the trees, the lake setting. Um, I think that board form and t uh, picking up on the texture of the wood really brought a different layer to the concrete and a softness to it. Um, and it looks quite beautiful when different light hits it. And at night when we wall graze that with some LED lights, it's, it's quite beautiful. The uh, PH2 tree box was a project where uh, a couple approached us about adding a uh, office and guest house to their existing home. They, they have a beautiful wooded lot that backs up to a creek. We looked at a number of options, but we wanted to take advantage of that basically forest-like backyard they have. The exterior cladding is uh, an ancient Japanese material, Kusagiban, I believe is how it's pronounced, and it is a burnt wood cypress, so it basically protects it from insects and weathering, etc. The goal was with that as well as to have a, a dark material that would blend into the forest. So we thought as a, as a simple solution, we would connect these two buildings by an elevated bridge and stilt uh, the addition to have a low impact on the woods and the forest and also give them the feeling of floating in the forest and have that kind of serenity in, in the office and for their guests. PTX1 project, the main driver and the reason that we arrived at a concrete roof with a with a sod roof plane on top of that was the main living space, the main, the main house itself was located 12 to 13 feet up above that cabana pavilion. And so when you're in the main living spaces, you're always going to be looking down onto the roof plane of that, of that house. So rather than doing a, a tar and gravel roof for the cabana, we thought it would be much more appealing to be looking out onto an extension of the, the meadow that was already there. The way we presented it to the client was that the earth was being extruded from that footprint um, down below. Really tr not trying to do too much with the project and really just trying to again let the, the material shine through and, and be, uh, you know, as Lewis Kahn kind of said, let the material be what it wants to, what it wants to be. And, and try to present it in its, its best possible light. And then the rest of it, we try to keep it simple and, and just let it take care of itself, basically. One of the things that really drives our, our design and our, our thoughts on modern living are materials. A new project we have on the Red River in Shreveport, we are utilizing rammed earth technology. Conceptually, this was brought about by looking at the river, the sediment, the layering. So rammed earth is similar to concrete, um, but it's done in forms and placed in lifts, compacted, another lift compacted. So you get these beautiful kind of striations through uh, rammed earth masses that are acting as the walls for this project. It is a it is a team effort, and and the client being a you know the biggest part of that team. I mean, I look back at some of our 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 projects that I would consider were great successes and and there was always a good client that was collaborative and considerate of our ideas. Climate has changed in terms of people's um, openness to modern architecture, although there's a lot of varying opinion on what that is, but we're finding you know those special clients every so often that, that make it worth it. We're definitely about quality, not quantity. Yeah, we're optimistic and uh, we'll continue to do what we love and push on. Thanks for watching Mod City TV. To find more videos, home tours, events, and all of the best of modern living in Dallas, visit us at moderndallas.net.